I swear that by the time I'm done, you'll get home just in time to eat Thanksgiving meal tonight. So it shouldn't be too long. Just a few hours. So happy Thanksgiving. Um, the biggest thing I'm thankful for is our small groups so far this year. I think they, I've heard nothing but really good, good feedback with the groups, um, really good turnouts, and I've heard that people are just having really good discussions and learning lots, and that's great because there's, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes, a lot of work that a lot of people have put into it, so it, it's always good to get positive feedback on that. Um, and a reminder that if you're not in a group, you can still join up for a group. We have a group uh, Sunday night at Mark and Lori's at 7 o'clock. But not this week. Not tonight. Um, Monday night at Mark Zimmerman's at 7 o'clock. Um, then Wednesday night here at the church with uh, Wayne Thomas as a leader. And that's at 6.30. Um, and then there's Friday night at Jamie's. And that starts around 7.30. <clears throat> And you're stuck with me as a leader the next two weeks because Jamie's away, so... Thursday night. Thursday night. Oh, yes. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> Steven's group Thursday night at uh, 7 o'clock, right? At Steven's. Steven and Tracy's. So, and another quick reminder is that if you're not here for church to hear the sermon based on the, the discussion, it's not the end of the world. You, you know, it's, you're not going to be behind. But if you do want to get up to speed... Uh, the videos are posted on uh, Facebook. It's kind of funny how they work because YouTube only allows you to put on a video 10 minutes long. So we all know how long Merle preached last week. So it took about six 10-minute sections <laughs> before we got it all on YouTube. Actually, it was only four. But, uh, so they'll, they're usually up late Monday or at the very latest by Tuesday. So if you want to just check those out, you can. Um, I just want to do a really quick, uh, kind of like a review, I feel like I'm in school, but <laughs> I hope it's not that boring. Um, so this week in our groups we talked about water walking, what is water walking? Um, so we discussed Peter getting out of the boat, uh, walking up to Jesus, uh, we, well at least our group, and it, it was in the video that the 11 guys who stayed in the boat were actually kind of the bigger losers and the one who jumped out of the boat. And, at one point started to sink. Um, and then we kind of discussed how the boat represents our comfort zone. You know, so Peter demonstrated uh, what can and will happen when you get out of the boat. Today I want to talk about uh, the tragedy of the unopened gift. Which, when I first heard and read the title, I thought that was a little bizarre. I was like, the unopened gift? Because the first thing I thought of was Christmas. I was like, there's no such thing as an unopened gift at Christmas time. You know, come 8, 9 o'clock in the morning on Christmas Day, every single present's been torn open, ripped apart, and every toy's played with, or every chocolate's been eaten, whatever. So, I was like, well, that, that can't be what it's talking about. But, I do want to state this. There are going to be some things that I'm not going to be able to talk about today. Because when you start talking about the gifts, you know, gifts that God has given us, the gifts, that, you know, how to use it and how to put it in play, we could be here for, we could miss Thanksgiving, let's just put it that way. So there are two responses to receiving a gift. The first one is that the gift is so valuable that it can't be risked. So, you know, it's worth so much that you're afraid to use it because you don't want to damage, damage it, you don't want to hurt, hurt the value of the item. <clears throat> for me, I forget how old I was, but for Christmas I got the Sports Illustrated uh, subscription. And when you, I think mom got it for me, or mom and dad, and when you signed up that particular, between a certain time frame, you got a special edition championship season on the Chicago Bulls. And this was 1997, so I was, oh, I was pumped. Got this magazine, stuck it in plastic, hung it up, never touched it. <laughs> Thinking it was gonna be worth tons of money someday. Because I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> in order for something like that to be worth money, it has to be rare. <laughs> Sports Illustrated has 3.5 million subscriptions. That is not rare. 3.5 million is not rare. So that magazine, I'd have to live four or five lives, lives in order for that to be worth enough money to cash that in and retire. 
The second is that the, the gift is so valuable that it must be risked. So, I mean, I did open the magazine once, maybe twice a year. And I make sure it's in perfect shape, put it back in the plastic. But as you all know, I'm a big basketball shoe fanatic. Some of them cost 200 bucks. If people tell me, like, man, you paid $200 on those shoes, I'd be putting those in a glass case and set them on my shelf so I can just look at them, put them on display. Oh, no, no, no. They had to be used. They had to be used. Um, women, engagement rings. Get engaged. You ever stick it back in the box, put it in the closet, and not ever show anybody? It's a good thing an engagement ring doesn't go on the middle finger. Because you'd be offending a lot of people <laughs> going around waving that big rock around. Uh, so, and this is going to tie in with Thanksgiving a little bit, just this one little section. When I look back at life, I look at all the people who's had an influence on, on my life. And some are obvious. Obvious is obviously your parents. Or my parents, I think. And uh, my brother, you know, he's a good guitar player, so that, you know, watching him play guitar, that kind of got me going. I have no idea how I got into basketball, because no one in my family is good at basketball. But I recently, a couple weeks ago, me and Taylor went to Yarmouth for a movie, and I uh, was standing outside of the washroom waiting for Taylor, and I saw this younger guy sitting over on the side. I was like, man, that guy looks familiar. It's like, guys, gym teacher's son. Hmm. Yeah, surely it's not. So out from the bathroom came my old gym teacher. And that just completely made, I mean, the movie wasn't that good. No offense, Taylor, but the movie wasn't that good. <laughs> but when I ran into my gym teacher, that just totally, like, just threw all that away. But, like, it was so good to see him because he was a really, really big influence on my life growing up. And, and I just felt already just very encouraged and just you know, just relaxed and, and good to go. But this, this next illustration is about a person who who's had a smaller impact on me, but in ways that I'll never forget. This person, as a, as a young teenager, uh, helped me financially go to a basketball camp. Um, and so that, you know, that was really good. And me and this person talked basketball quite a bit. And it wasn't just about the sport itself. It was more about the mental aspects of the game and, and strategy and things like that. And it was Bucky McConnell. No one saw that one coming, did you? Well, he's got strong ties to Westport, so he'd be out on the road playing basketball. And there was this one day he pulled up in a, a gold-colored Corvette. <laughs> I was like, man, that is a sweet ride. <laughs> so he offered to take me for a ride, and so I obviously jumped in. And uh, we were cruising down the road, and we hit a straight stretch, so he kind of tramped it a little bit, just to demonstrate a little bit of the power behind the wheel. And I was like, man, that's awesome. So then just down the street from where we were is another gentleman who's got a Corvette. Uh, Bucky's was a 71, and I believe the other guy's Corvette is a 73. And it was in mint you know, tip-top shape. And so I asked Bucky, I was like, you see uh, Ralph's Corvette? That's a pretty nice Corvette. And he came back to me and just said, yeah, but you don't ever drive it. I said, what's the point of having a car if you don't drive it? And I was like, that's a good point. So this isn't really like a gift. I, I mean, I think Bucky went out and bought the Corvette. I don't think anyone like gave it to him for Christmas. Maybe, I don't know. But, it still demonstrates that whole point of use what you have. There's no point in having a magazine wrapped up in plastic, hoping that it's going to worth money, be worth money someday. But I've grown such an, a strong attachment to it, I'm not going to trade it in even if it is worth money. Because I like looking at the pictures, I like reading some of it. So what's the point of having something so valuable to keep it in perfect shape and not use it, or not ever sell it. 